I, I don't think it's your daddy's uh, law and order. Um, so hopefully, you know, and that was kind of our marching order. Like it's. Well, I think your daddy will love it. <laughs> yeah. but everyone's coming. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think I'm probably going to get high fives from some corners of the internet for getting Chris Maloney to say daddy on Zoom. So I'm, I'm Okay, good. no, this may not be your daddy's law and order, but it certainly is your zaddy's. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kate. Hi there. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So uh, I, this first question is actually for the both of you in a sense, but, but Chris, I'll, I'll ask you to tackle it first. What was it like for you to return to this character? What sort of mental preparation did you have to do to re-inhabit this role again? Um, mm, uh, that's funny. Um, I quickly found much of the energy of mental preparation was uh, me re recognizing uh, uh, the expectations and anticipations. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that's a lot of energy and that's totally stuff that's out of your control. So I, that, as soon as I had a talk with myself going, you know, you do you and take one step at a time and figure it out along the way, um, all of the, any kind of uh, anxiety or tension I might have had uh, towards entering this world and re-inhabiting this character, that went away. I was able to do, and I don't, you know, I don't know, I can't talk about that work only because I just don't know. It's, it, at this point in my life, it, it is, you've already put on his clothes. You've already walked the walk with him, you know the circumstances, you're clear about where he's been. You know, that actually that was the, probably the most work is like figuring out, having discussions with Eileen and, and everybody just nailing down, where have you been? What have you been doing? And that can, you know, inform little pieces of where he's at now. And I'll say that uh, I was, uh, I'm still shocked and surprised at how seamless it was. You know, when I walked on to, because uh, he was in, he was reintroduced on the SVU episode. And, you know, getting back together with I, with Ice and Marishka, you know, that was that was it. It was um, just happened, and it was correct and easy. And and Eileen, to what extent did you similarly have to block out expectations or external noise or? fan accounts or or any number of, of influences as you decided to take on this role? Um, this is the answer I want to hear. This, <laughs> this is the question for yeah. her to answer. Go yeah, ahead. Exactly. I'm all ears. I mean, how challenging is it to write a character with so much history and that's so beloved? What what was that like for you? It's daunting. It's, it's altogether daunting. I don't think that I've really yet faced the kind of barrage of expectations, that's that's yet to come. Um, because right now, it seems to me that the fans of the show are just happy that Stabler's coming back. I mean, thrilled that Stabler's coming back. But, you know, for me, I, I mean, it was both trying to kind of tap into this voice and this history and with Chris and some of our other colleagues, and without wishing to give anything away, no spoilers. Um, you know, there's a whole history in those ensuing years that we had to kind of infuse into the stabler of, of now. And that's a really, I mean, as a writer, there's just nothing more exciting than living inside of a complex character and imagining and shaping the evolution of that character over the course of, you know, 12 momentous years. Yeah, of course, I think, you know, and again, no spoilers, but there are two elephants in the room, one of which I'll get to later, but one of them is the expectation that there will be some explanation of why Stabler and Benson's paths didn't cross for 12 years, this of, of 
why is she just seeing him for the first time now? Did you feel like that was a, a topic you had to tackle or were you taking the approach of history begins anew with this chapter and we're not gonna worry about that? Um, for me, and I mean, I have to, I have to think that Chris and I have, you know, somewhat the same answer because we've been working together on this. Um, no, history doesn't begin anew. This, this is a, we want to feel that this character has lived these years and this life, and we want to see those years on him and feel the ways in which he's changed and the ways he hasn't changed and the ways that he hasn't changed as much as he thinks he has and all of that. And. Chris here's, my, here's my answer. If you don't address that, Eileen and Chris Maloney will be tarred and feathered by the, the fans. You cannot, you know, the, how I left is such a um, deep sore point uh, for a lot of people. And I, I it was jarring. It was a jarring, uh, uh, unceremonious, unsatisfying exit. Done. So, um, I, and I, for my part, I don't think we have fully explained or satisfactorily explained. And that's, you know, where he's been, where he's at, how he's dealing, what are the whys, where are the, you know, just take a deep breath. This, it was, it, everything is so complicated and you just can't say, hey, this was the reason. And then let's move on. It's, it's. I don't know how uh, articulatable it is at this point, if that's even a word. And I think that's what the road that we're kind of going down. We are, uh, we being Eileen, myself, and I, and I think, you know, at the SVU, you know, Warren wants a hand in, you yeah, know, yeah, we, we're all in this together to try and figure out how to bring the bond together, heal the wounds, give explanations whether they're satisfactory or not is for a lot of people to decide you know it's it, it, oh. you know, it's it's, a, it's tough it's a tough one it doesn't happen overnight and it gets negotiated and renegotiated i mean in life it does and in yeah. our version of life it does mm -hmm. uh chris to that to that effect how involved are you with talking to Eileen and the other writers uh, as you reintroduce Stabler when you have a moment where you feel like that's definitely not something Stabler would do or that's yeah that's actually I, I think Stabler would handle it like this that's right that's that's on the money like to, to what to what extent are are you you know driving the bus in terms of the development of the character from here on out well let's be clear back. what <laughs> what don't hold back don't hold back. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I, let's be clear. And I say this all the time. The writers break rocks. You know, they do the tough digging. And, and then I come along and I do a little polish, okay? But I do feel my contribution. First of all, they, they write, right? They do, they they. they form the arc of where the story's going. So, you know, they're doing all that threading. And then, you know, they write each beat and they write each scene and they are building these relationships and, they, and it has to track. And I'm there and I have a very unique position because I'm the only guy going, I was this guy for 12 years. So I, I, I know what he would and wouldn't do. I just, you know, I know just false notes and I know false attitudes or I go, that's not coming out of his, he doesn't even know that word or he, you know, just, <laughs> and it's just small stuff like that. But, you know, words matter. And, and, and really to me, I mean, a word, I love words and a, a words matter. And um, so anyway, I'll, that's kind of my contribution. Um, I will punch up dialogue that I just think that's kind of where the, how a, the relationship vis-a-vis -vis me and my family kind of rests and lays, uh, uh, me vis-a-vis -vis Benson. Um, and I'll say this, uh, I could not be, they could not be more gracious. And 
Um, I feel as though I'm, I am an integral part of the process when it comes to that aspect of the storytelling, right? They, they don't get bogged down in words. They just come back with as long as the tone or the intent of this scene remains, uh, you know, as we intended it, we're good to go. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. I, I will affirm that and, and say that even, even there, um, Chris was probably holding back a little bit in that his contribution is enormous. And yes, of course, he knows Stabler better than anybody, um, but he also knows these stories and, and how to tell them. And he's a, an invaluable creative partner in that way. Thanks. One thing that interests me as a, as a sort of minor expert now on the law and order universe, well, from what I've been told, it seems as though organized crime is going to tweak the format somewhat from the traditional law and order procedural uh, method. And, you know, in, in the arc of, of law and order spinoffs, you know, there's been a lot of success when the show has stuck to that procedural format. And it's been riskier when something like a trial by jury or what have you has has attempted to find its footing when it's gone down a, a different path. Um, you know, can you, Eileen, especially I think, but also Chris, in terms of how you're approaching it, uh, how are you guys handling the different format of this show uh, from the traditional law and order layout? And, uh, you know, how does longer story arcs, how does that play into it? Um, and, and, and what does the concept of organized crime really mean as opposed to dealing with special victims? Um, sorry, my keyboard is doing something. Um, so your premise is correct. <laughs> we're, we're, we're telling longer arc stories, somewhat more serialized. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're doing that with a view to still being true to the, the law and order kind of franchise and canon. And in our show, there will always be an episodic story. I mean, each episode will stand on its own and be satisfying on its own merits. And our stories, I mean, the, the long arc crime story that we tell will encompass a season. In our first season, there is a story, but also where I guess, I don't know, that, I, I don't wanna say we're going deeper into character because I think that Law and Order has always been a very character driven show, but we're really following character story and considering it to be, to, to, to be on the same level of importance as the, as the procedural elements to the story. So we're getting into stuff in, in a way that might be new to, to the franchise or, or might just move the franchise in a direction. Chris, when you heard it was going to be uh, centered on organized crime and, and that world, were you excited about that? What were your thoughts of, okay, so not, not special victims, which, is understandable because that already exists. Uh, what did you think about this pivot? Well, <clears throat> I was very satisfied <clears throat> of about my knowledge of, of this area, which is to say, when I signed on for SVU, I went, how the hell is this gonna go anywhere? What is it gonna be? It's, you know, how many sex crimes can you come up with? Well, you know, 24 years later, whatever it is, there you go. There's your answer, Chris. 24 years worth at least. Yeah. So, so you know, he said organized crime. I went, sure. And what do I know? Which is the, the truth and the truth of the matter. But, you know, so that was it. I mean, I'm like, sure, why not? I, th I did think, though, that Elliot, like a seasoned kind of gruff, or, you know, he's, he's, you know, he is a, a warrior. Uh, I thought he was kind of perfect for that. Cause you know, you think of organized crime, that's kind of almost like, you know, an old world trait, you know, uh, a la the Giuliani era, you know, of New York. And that's, you know, it's kind of a throwback. It's kind of, it's 
kind of cool. And also, I think not a lot of people people equate, oh, organized crime. You know, yeah, that's where all the, the guys, it, you know, organized crime is far different. It's not your, uh, your dad's organized crime, simply because organized crime operates, uh, you know, under different rules and in different ways than the days of old. Well, and in, in a world that's ever more global, organized crime is, is a gro global proposition. And, yeah. and I, I would assume a cyber proposition too. I mean, Absolutely. it's part of that, that global universe is, is the cyber trafficking that now can occur and, and, and all of that. So mm -hmm. uh, now I did mention a second elephant in the room that I'm gonna circle back to, which is, you know, you've got a lot of explaining to do uh, for these dozen years in which for some reason, two deeply bonded partners have never crossed paths. Um, and, and the big question of, have they been mad at each other all this time? Like, why did he not show up when she became a mom? Why did she not show up when whatever may have happened in his past happened? Um, but again, given my, my minor degree in law and order history, there is of course also the fan pressure for a romance, <laughs> for some long awaited romance. The YouTube compilations of literally every time they have ever held each other's glance for longer than three seconds, it exists. Multiple people have made that comp compilation video. Uh, do you care about such fan clamoring at all? Do you tune that out? Do you think that there is any universe, the fans will come for me if I didn't ask this question, in which such such a thing could occur? And that's for me or, both. Me or Eileen? I'm going to step through my <laughs> question. Both have to answer. Eileen, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm going to be right back after two yeah. Wait. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, it, that's great. It's great. It's great. And it's fun. And, you know, obviously we recognized it when we were together on SVU and we would, you know, kind of toy. Yeah, I mean, you've seen the outtakes on on YouTube. YouTube I've been in the photo studio with the two of you. I know. Well, yeah. there you go. You know, we're yes, we're always you know kind of toying with that, leaning into that, teasing with that, whatever. So, um, but as far as it happening, you know, I, I think it's a lot. Uh, I think that falls under the category of um, you got a lot of explaining to do, which is. I think we're going to stumble, bumble, as I think most human beings do through complicated uh, areas or, you know, difficult terrain, emotional terrain. Um, you know, what are the answers there? Are, you know, really, there are no answers right now. And I, you know, and I think that's the, the art and the beauty and of what we do. We, you know, the writers get together and they create these connections or these circumstances and the actors get to you know play them out so um you know i'm ex i'm excited I, I think there's a world of possibility i'm excited too and i'm also just um girding myself for for the onslaught no matter what story we wind up telling um i know that there are some folks that are going to want the other story and we'll see um, but I'm, Warren, Warren tricked me into getting into one of those internet conversations. He threw to me when somebody asked about it and I didn't know what I was stepping into. <laughs> well, it's hard to go up against those folks too, because they're sometimes, and this is why I say I have a minor degree. They'll be equipped with like, no, 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 in season four, he walked into a room and he was playing her pimp. And then when she looked at him, there was a thing that had, it's just like, oh, okay, I can't argue with that. I can't even begin to argue with, you clearly know more than I do. So, uh, well, I won't, I won't try to trip you up there, but oh, one of the other questions I do have is that, you know, in, in 2021, uh, I think, especially after just this past year, to launch any police procedural uh, or any police drama in, in which your central character is a white male police officer is a, a daunting and heady task, particularly a white male police officer who has a history of being short-tempered at times or at the very least reactionary in nature. 
uh, how did you approach those challenges and, and how did it inform the way you wanted to tell your stories moving forward? We've talked about it a great deal. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we start with the premise that Elliot Stabler has been alive all of these years and he knows the changes and has undoubtedly participated in them in one way or another. How he's participated in them, where he emerges in this conversation is an exciting choice for us, a choice that we've made and that we'll talk about. But as I kind of alluded to earlier, he's changed, but maybe not as much as he's he thinks he's changed. I also must say, and I think Eileen will agree that, you know, the whole Wolf organization, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, there's a reason they say rip from the headlines, which is to, to say that they, they are, are not blind. They, they watch what's happening. They understand the circumstances. And if anything, they leaned into it. It's, you know, you bring Stabler back into this new environment and, and that's a, that's, you know, a challenge that's, there is a challenge right there. And there is a story to be told there. there. And um, we all understand the challenge uh, that's been presented to us, but I, I think we all believe that it's a story worth telling and it's a space worth investigating. And, um, you know, uh, depends on how you feel about Stabler, I guess, you know, cause he's gonna be this central character bringing people this thing, you know, uh, uh, the older white male cop or white, white cop of, of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, be on his journey with him as, as he navigates the new norm. Uh, on balance, without giving anything away, how much of Stabler's personal life, his, his role as when he's off the clock and, and away from the job is going to be in evidence in organized crime. You know, over the years, you watch early episodes of SVU, for instance, or, or pretty much the bulk of the, the Mothership Law and Order episodes. And it was pretty strictly procedural. It wasn't until later seasons that you started to get into anybody's love life or home life or parent life. Um, and, and SVU certainly evolved to a point where we knew that Stabler, you know, had a, had a child with mental illness and, and that his mother had grappled with the same and that his marriage went through trials. Um, to what extent will that same balance be in evidence in organized crime? How much will we see of Stabler the man as opposed to Stabler the cop? Well, so far it's been pretty intense <laughs> <laughs> and very satisfying and very complicated and very intense. Did I mention it's intense? <laughs> Yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's <coughs> heavily featured, Stabler as the man, Stabler's life, um, the life that he lives as a cop when he's working and when he's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and I would venture to say that it's probably a significant part of the reason why I was invited to take part in this project and that's, um, that was a gift to me, but um, it's it's what I do. Okay, that's that's going to get a lot of people very excited, I'm sure. Uh, well, I think we can go to the last question, which is just um, you know the look and feel of this show is different from SVU, but at it, at its heart, it's it's still the same stabler. Or is it the same stabler? I mean, I, Chris, you did say to us in in our in our cover story that one of the things that you appreciated was that. If you have a younger guy who's short-tempered and hot-headed and wherever, that's one thing. But if an older guy is still doing that stuff, that's that's not so cool anymore. That you have to show that you've gotten older and and, and wiser. Um, what is your uh, approach or philosophy to the ways in which or the reasons why Stabler needs to have gotten a little bit older and wiser, other than just the passing of years? Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the, the stable you have now, um, you know, he's he's been marinated by age, um, hopefully with that uh, dollops of wisdom 
Um, you know, I always thought of him as a very open individual, very linear, but very open, you, you know, conservative by nature. But, and all of these are, those are fine qualities. I, I would argue they're great, they're great qualities, but it's that openness, that ability to admit, you know, as stubborn as he is in his perceived rightness, you know, that he is a, a, a man that understands how progress proceeds. It's, it's, it's not as clean as one would hope it to be. You know, and I think that, I think at the cornerstone of what Stabler was, what was this youthful impatience, uh, testosterone fueled and this in, uh, injustice. What would nearly drive him insane. And I've spoken to SVU detectives and they have all, and the ones that I've spoken with, that's what I, that, that, that's what I felt I channeled, which was the things that they had seen. <clears throat> I'm thinking of one in particular. It's very, it's, um, <clears throat> sorry. It's very difficult and it changes you. Um, and, and, and I equated that to someone who needed, you know, got into the, the policing so that those, uh, th those that were a little, you know, the women, the children, right? The, you know, the ones that needed you know, help um, that they didn't need a, a protector. And, you know, that's just not the way the world works. So I think that, you know, now Elliot has kind of, you know, because he's had also been exposed to the world, right? So he's gotten out there. And so I think with a little bit of maturity and I think, I, I think exposure to the world and I think, him doing the hard work on his relationship with his wife was very helpful. Um, you know, he comes back passionate, but now with a deeper understanding of, of the mechanisms of how things work. And, you know, maybe he comes back with a little more patience as well. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It does. Thank you. Uh, so the, by the, thought. the last question is for both of you guys, which is just uh, an open-ended, uh, what do you want fans to know about the show? What, what do you want them to, to know most importantly as, they, as, as April 1st approaches? Um, I want them to know that it's going to be a wild ride, that we're, <clears throat> they're going to go well, they're going to be back with someone they love. And we're going to go places that they've never been with him. That's pretty, pretty promising. Uh, Chris, how about you? Uh, I, I think it'll be a satisfying uh, emotional ride. I think that uh, a lot of uh, potential journeys and, and, and questions are left you know, me, my family, Benson, that those stories will bear fruit later down, later down the road, that these uh, first eight episodes, uh, it's, uh, Eileen has spun quite a yarn and it's, it's gonna be a very uh, satisfying story to follow. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's your daddy's uh, law and order. Um, so hopefully, you know, and that was kind of our marching order. Like it's, oh, it's daddy the, will still, I think your daddy will love it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just think I'm probably going to get high fives from some corners of the internet for getting Chris Maloney to say daddy on Zoom. <laughs> so I'm, I'm okay. Good. No, this may not be your daddy's law and order, but it certainly is your zaddy's. Oh yeah, it is. It is your daddy's okay. law and order. Excellent. I, I mean, I just, I, I'm 
beloved now by a whole section of the internet. 